If you like the video, please don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified on every new upload. Assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to study about the distal shoe space maintainer. So this is also known as intra alveolar appliance and this is given to maintain the space when there is early loss of the deciduous second molar. So in the primary dentition whenever the child loses his or her deciduous second molar we have to maintain that space because the permanent molar erupts distal to the deciduous second molar okay so the deciduous second molar acts as a guide for the eruption of the permanent first molar because if we don't maintain the space the molar will drift it can drift in any direction so here in this case we can see that the deciduous second molar has been lost so in that case the permanent molar which is about to erupt it can drift in any direction so we need to have something in that space so that you know it is properly aligned the molar is properly aligned so what we're gonna do we apply or we have a distal shoe space maintainer there so we take the primary first molar as the abutment and we adapt a stainless steel band and then we take the impression alginate impression and then we place the band on that alginate impression and then we pour the cast so what we'll have we'll have a cast with that band on okay so on that band a loop is contoured and it extends distally into the prepared opening on the model and the free ends of the loop are soldered to the band now the permanent first molar can erupt properly in the mouth now there are certain contraindications for the use of distal shoe space maintainer like inadequate abutment due to multiple loss of teeth in that case we cannot give it and if there is poor oral hygiene also in medically compromised patient like patients with congenital heart disease kidney problems or history of rheumatic fever it's contraindicated and also in congenitally missing first permanent molar it is contraindicated the village distal shoe was an early design of distal shoe space maintainer it is not used now or rarely used now because of increased cost of the material and difficulties in tooth preparation and you know it had a very complicated fabrication procedure now one of the appliances which is in practice is roche's distal shoe or its modification which has a distal intragingival extension so the advantage of roche's appliance is that it has a v-shaped end which offers a broader surface and help prevent rotations we need to understand the normal path of eruption of maxillary and mandibular first permanent molar because of this the distal extension of the appliance will differ for the upper and the lower arches so here i'm drawing the upper and the lower deciduous molars and there we have a space which was present because of the loss of the deciduous second molar and then we also have the erupting permanent first molar upper and the lower so in the lower arch the contact area of the distal extension of the appliance should have a slight lingual position over the crest of the alveolar ridge in order to engage the mesial contact area of the first permanent molar and when we talk about the maxillary appliance the contact area of the distal extension of the maxillary appliance should be slightly facial to the crest of the alveolar ridge so these considerations are important in preventing the erupting permanent molar from slipping contact with the appliance so in the lower arch the contact area of the distal extension of the appliance should have a slight lingual position and the contact area of the distal extension of the maxillary appliance should be slightly facial to the crest of the alveolar ridge i hope i made my point clear now length of distal extension that is the horizontal bar is also very important decision so in cases when the patient comes to you with the second primary molar already present the tooth should be maintained if possible until the appliance is ready to be sealed but if the patient comes to you with already missing deciduous second molar it is recommended that the distal surface of the first primary molar 
and the mesial surface of the unerupted first permanent molar should be used. You can measure from the distal of the first primary molar and the mesial of the unerupted first permanent molar by the radiograph. Okay. Now, depth of gingival extension that is the vertical bar is also important factor because if the extension is left too long, it can harm the developing second molar. And if the extension is too short, the first permanent molar could erupt underneath the pliants. In the next video, we will be studying about some controversies about this appliance and modifications of this appliance. So, I hope you found this video helpful. Please don't forget to comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Allah Hafiz.